Major Slack videos. Yeah, <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Shut up, Pee Wee. Okay. Yo, my name is Major Slack. Thanks for joining me, and this is Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. <laughs> alright, alright, calm down, calm down. Newly released a couple of three months ago, Wolfenstein 2 has you continuing the adventures of super soldier William B.J. Blaskowitz, who is fearlessly running and gunning in an alternate reality where Nazis win World War II and have now occupied the U.S. of A. after dropping an atom bomb on it. Blaskowitz is part of a band of resistance fighters trying to take back America from the evil Nazi regime. Wolfenstein 2 has you running behind the gun with a standard array of World War II weapons such as a pistol, submachine gun, assault rifle, laser beam, sticky blow up blue launcher, you know, standard stuff, right? <laughs> and more! Plus a wide array of weapon upgrades can be found throughout the game and attached to the weapons of your choice to apply the upgrade of your choice. Yeah, that's right. Weapon upgrades are now generic. Once you have an upgrade, go into your weapon menu, drop down the upgrade list of your favorite weapon. Choose one and away you go. Silent bullets, bigger bang, shock damage, whatever you like. Basically, customize your arsenal according to your playstyle. What else? Uh, dual wielding weapons is back. One SMG is not enough? We'll try one in each hand to see how they like them apples. Commanders are back. Alert these Nazi officers of your presence and they will sound the alarm and call in a regiment of reinforcements. Stealthing and takedowns are back. Don't like running and gunning? Go into sneak mode and go ninja on that Nazi ass. Perks are back. Complete any of a huge array of ongoing challenges to earn permanent combat bonuses, making it easier to survive the insane combat, and I mean insane. The game will literally throw the kitchen sink at you right from the get-go and will not stop. Seriously, if you boot up this game, you better be ready to bring it. Not to mention, Wolfenstein 2 has a spectacular, and I mean spectacular, storyline. Wait a minute. You're actually commanding the story of a video game? Who are you and what have you done with Major Slack? <laughs> yep, that's right. Satan just put together a hockey team because hell just froze over and they're hosting the Stanley Cup playoffs down there. Yep. <laughs> I know, all you hardcore slackers know that I normally don't give a rat's behind about the backstory in a video game, but this time... This time it's different. The storyline in Wolfenstein 2 really made me sit up and take notice. I was thoroughly entertained by every single cutscene. Seriously, I loved it. Um, so there you go, a quick overview of Wolfenstein 2. Let's open the floor to questions. In the studio today, we have resident internet troll, Pee Wee Weisenheimer. How you doing, Pee Wee? Slap, you suck. Shut up, Pee Wee. So how's the family? Good, yours? Good, thanks. Okay, so enough of the small talk. Wolfenstein 2, what would you like to know? Okay, at the beginning of the game, you start out in a wheelchair. How long do we have to play in a wheelchair? I take it you don't appreciate the total badassery of going full-on Rambo in a wheelchair? Um, can you just answer the question, please, Lack? Okay, how long do you have to play in a wheelchair? Not long, about 20 or 30 minutes, depending on your playstyle and the difficulty setting. Not long at all. Okay, next. What's with the 50 health? Is that some kind of difficulty setting thing? If I turn down the difficulty, will I get more health? No, you will not. You get 50 health, that's what you start out with. It has nothing to do with the difficulty setting. And you're going to have 50 health for about half the game. Okay, so just get used to it. Um, pretty much your armor is what you're going to depend on. Okay, for the first half of the game, you're going to have 50 health, but you're going to have up to 200 armor. So that's what it's all about. Armor, armor, armor. Does health regenerate? Yes and no. It regenerates, but only up to the nearest multiple of 10. So if your health is at, say, 22, it will regenerate to 30. After that, you're going to have to find health pickups to get it back up to 50. And by the way, the ability to overcharge your health has returned. That's a game mechanic where if your health is at a maximum of 50, you can still pick up more health and temporarily increase your maximum health. But in this situation, your health will gradually degenerate until it gets back down to 50. All right, and I'll be showing plenty of situations situations of using this strategy in videos to come. I heard the game is really hard. How hard is it? Uh, pretty hard. Um, but that question is best answered by showing you the difficulty settings. There are six different difficulty settings by by default. Um, uh, I just love the look on BJ's face as you cycle through the settings. And um, the default one is bring them on. 
So here we go. Let's just read them all. If you look down on the bottom left corner of the screen, they give you a little description of what each difficulty setting is all about. The easiest one is easy difficulty setting for nov the novice gainer, gamer rather. Uh, don't hurt me. Medium for the casual gamer. Bring them on. Medium for the experienced gamer. Do or die hard difficulty setting for the expert gamer. Call me Terror Billy. Very hard for the heroic gamer. And I am Death Incarnate, ultra hard for the fearless gamer. There's also a seventh difficulty seven setting, Mind Leaping, which is more of a challenge run. Basically, Mind Leaping is exactly like I am Death Incarnate, except um, you have to complete the game with no saves. Okay, no saves, no checkpoints, nothing. And this is unlocked by completing the game on any other difficulty setting. You can even complete it on easy, and you will unlock the Mind Leaping difficulty setting. All right. Um, this is how I would rate it. Uh, I would say the normal difficulty setting for the average gamer is actually this one here. The default one I would I would call hard. So this is what, how I would rate it. This is easy. This is normal. This is hard. This is extra hard. This is super hard. And this is, well, Rage Quitters Anonymous. <laughs> and this one, my Lieben, well, you know, we'll just notify your next of kin in advance so they won't wonder what happened to you. And I'm going to do an extra, uh, I'm going to do another video showing exactly how much damage you take on various difficulty settings so you can see clearly um, how punishing, for example, I am death incarnate is. It's absolutely insane. How long is the game? If you're just running through the main missions, it'll take you anywhere from 10 to 20 hours depending on the difficulty setting and your playstyle. But completing just the main missions, all right, if you just go through the main missions and don't do anything else, um, be advised that will only register as 27% completion once you've gone right through the entire game. Um, there's still a lot more game to come. There's uh, side missions, there's collectibles, there's a complete copy of the original Wolfenstein that came out like 20 years ago in all, in all its pixelated eight color glory and, and more. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of bang for your buck. Not to mention tremendous replay value. I would describe this as a linear first-person shooter with a ton of elbow room. That is, there are so many ways to complete your objectives as you make your way through the game. That you know, there, there's there's just a ton of replay value. What's the save system like? Fantastic. You can save the game anytime you like, and they give you ten separate manual saves to work with in three different game slots. So, um, yeah, you can start the game, um, a completely new game, three times. So, if you start one game on easy, for example, one, one game on normal, one game on very hard, or, you know, start a, a stealth playthrough and a running gun playthrough, and each one um, will have 10 manual saves at your disposal to work with, all right? You save the game anytime you like. The game also saves um, at various checkpoints automatically throughout the game. So if you forget to save the game, the game's got your back on that. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the save system is your perk progression is saved. Uh, it's really weird the way they do it. Let's say, for example, take this save that I made way back near the beginning of the game, okay? Now you're working your way through the game. Let's say you get halfway through the game. You save the game and your perks have progressed up to a certain point. Now let's say you go back and you reload your original save. This save will not reload with the perk progression that you had at that time. It will really reload with the perk progression that you had at your most latest save. And I'll explain that more in detail in a separate video I'm going to do about how to farm perks. All right, how to, I'm going to show you how to max out um, several key perks before you even complete the first mission. And it seems like they did this on purpose. It seems like this was intended. It's not a glitch. So this is not an exploit. This is just the way they, they intended on doing it. Because if you um, play on the Mind Lieben difficulty setting, um, you have to play through without any saves. And at that point, you can't do any perk farming. All right. So it seems like that's what they intended. Who should I choose at the beginning, Fergus or Wyatt? Fergus or Wyatt, um, depending on who, you, you get a choice of saving either Fergus or Wyatt, and that guy will be in the timeline as you work way, work your way through the game, and you'll see cutscenes featuring them, and both of them are Riot as far as story-wise. Fergus is kind of like this tough-as-nails Scottish, Scottish, I'm going to say Scottish uh, soldier. 
Wyatt is more of like he's a dedicated soldier, but he's more of a space cadet. So I, I don't want to do any spoilers. So that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, but more importantly, um, who you choose that to save at the beginning will determine what kind of special weapon you will have throughout the game. All right. If you choose to save Fergus, which is what most people do, you'll get the laser gun. All right. And if you choose to save Wyatt, you'll get the what's known as the diesel craftwork, which is basically a glue gun an explosive glue gun so you shoot out these globules of explosive sticky glue and then you can remotely detonate them and um yeah i prefer that one actually it's a lot more tactical and um you can have a lot of fun with that you can shoot this on enemies and they won't even know it so it doesn't blow your cover if you shoot the sticky glue on an enemy and you can just walk them around and when he gets close to some other enemies, set it off and blow them all to smithereens. Yeah, it's a lot more tactical. Or you can shoot like a whole bunch of sticky glue uh, on the ground and then set it off remotely when an enemy walks over it. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's not so straightforward as a laser gun, but um, yeah, those are your choices. So once again, Fergus, choose to save Fergus if you want the laser craft work, the laser gun. Choose to save Wyatt if you want the stick, the explosive sticky glue gun, which is known as the diesel craft work. Okay, and finally, Slack, the question that everybody's got on their minds, are you going to do a walkthrough? Most def, most definitely. And I'll be doing a walkthrough on the hardest difficulty available by default. I am death incarnate. Yep, that's right, ultra hard walkthrough. Coming your way very soon. I'm going to set up the walkthrough with a series of informational and strategy videos to cover things that I won't have time to cover in the commentary in my walkthrough, which will free up my commentary during the walkthrough because I am going to be busy. It's a busy game, especially on Alter Heart. And here's a little walkthrough teaser. Here's how to stealth kill the first two commanders in the game. Thanks a lot for watching. And hey guys, because of the risque nature <laughs> of Wolfenstein 2, um, it's going to be very difficult to fully monetize these videos. Um, I'm already working for less than minimum wage, taking the time and effort to produce real walkers. And with Wolfenstein 2, I'll be taking an even bigger hit. I'd appreciate it if you went on over to my Patreon page and made a small donation. You can donate as little as $1. And if you want to donate more, hey, that'd be great. All right. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it.